How China Could Beat the United States and Everyone Else to the Moon and Mars. Welcome to the Terran Space Academy. Thank you for listening. Almost everywhere you go on Earth, there are advantages and disadvantages. The upside. Europe has wonderful social systems like healthcare, education, and retirement security. This is the place on Earth with the happiest and healthiest workers and citizens. The United States has a very dynamic business system. It costs only $40 in most states to create and register a company. Everything can be done online without an attorney. This is where the world's currently most innovative and largest companies started. China has adopted the U.S. model of business. It is now communist only in its government. It has an incredible potential, with a population almost double that of the United States and European Union combined. It is now a manufacturing and technology powerhouse. The Downside Europe has enough red tape to strangle any entrepreneur. I considered opening an office for a small aerospace firm in Luxembourg. You had to first put several thousand dollars in a bank account and leave it there for a long time. You had to hire an attorney to apply for permission to start a company. Your company had to be part owned by a resident of Luxembourg. To be a resident you had to live there at least a year and apply for residency. Or you could pay a current resident of Luxembourg about 2,000 euros a month to do nothing but exist and allow you to apply to start your company. All this made it impossible to participate in the Luxembourg Space Development Fund for any small company. My friends in Europe tell me similar stories from Germany and elsewhere. The United States goes through a period of destruction and rebuilding every four to eight years. American politicians are no longer responsive to the needs of the people. There is zero correlation between the will of the people and the actions of Congress or the laws that are passed. U.S. Supreme Court rulings like Citizens United have made it legal for wealthy individuals through their companies to openly bribe politicians to do their bidding. For example, almost 80% of the U.S. population supports universal background checks to purchase firearms, but it does not even come up for a vote. America is now an oligarchy. The two political parties in America have stagnated. Every time there is a new administration, they tear down as much of the previous administration's accomplishments as possible no matter their merit. Nixon killed Apollo because he hated Kennedy, among other reasons. Because Kennedy had beaten Nixon in a previous election. President Carter canceled the B-1 bomber that Ford had initiated, slowing its development and costing hundreds of millions of dollars more. Reagan canceled many of Carter's energy policies, and it goes on. President Obama canceled Constellation. Trump canceled the Asteroid Redirect Mission. The point is not that any of these programs were without flaws. It is that if you keep tearing down the foundation of your home before you get the rest of it built, you will stay homeless. All the capital, human and financial, that went before is wasted. China has its own problems. It produces a huge amount of pollution that damages the longevity and happiness of its people. The government is also not very responsive to the will of the people. It does, however, have one distinct advantage over Europe and especially the United States. It plans long term. It develops a national strategy, not based on whose pocket gets immediately lined, but how the nation will benefit in the future. This allows China to plan and carry out massive publicly funded projects. Europe and America have one more problem. They sometimes try to ban technology itself rather than banning a specific use of that technology. Any citizen can hold back an entire industry if they have enough political clout. The United States suppresses encryption technology and many other areas of development. The U.S. invented video cassette recorders, but there were immediate lawsuits by television and movie companies afraid it would damage their industry. In fact, the invention revolutionized the entertainment industry, and it grew exponentially when an old movie could be watched at someone's convenience or they could record television shows to watch later. Then there were the unexpected industry revolutions. This is why the investment in space industry benefits a nation about seven times more than the initial investment from the Apollo numbers. We have efficient solar energy systems because of the space industry. We have telemetry for patients in hospitals because of the space industry. And the video cassette recorder allowed continuous recording of your home or business, creating an entirely new security industry. 
but the players ended up being built and improved in Japan. The lawsuits held back American companies long enough, not by court order, but fear of losing so much of an initial investment that Japanese companies ended up with the best video cassette machines and the US never caught up. This brings me back to the coming revolution in the space industry. China has some of the best shipbuilding facilities in the world. Elon Musk is rapidly proving that you don't make custom-built Ferraris to go to space. You build a truck. The amount of mass you can get into orbit depends upon the percentage of your ship mass that is propellant, how fast that propellant can be sent through an engine, and the efficiency of that engine. The mass of propellant question is about 95% for chemical engines to get into orbit. Turbo pumps have solved the fuel flow question. The best ones could empty an Olympic-sized swimming pool in seconds. The efficiency of your engine is the only variable in this equation that can be rapidly changed. SpaceX uses RP-1 in the Falcon 9 with a specific impulse of 282 at liftoff and up to 311 in space. Starship will burn methane and have a specific impulse of about 330 seconds average with a propellant mass of 95%. The Chinese at some point will start following SpaceX lead and start developing large-scale reusable rocket systems like the Starship. But what could they do that would cause them to jump ahead of everyone? Go nuclear. A nuclear fission-powered rocket system would have a specific impulse of 900 to 1000 seconds. Now the few that have been developed were based on expensive and large reactors like the Kiwi B developed by the United States. But a more efficient and smaller design could be rapidly developed if someone were willing to make the initial investment and had the freedom to do it. Only China or Russia could do this quickly right now, and Russia lacks the financial resources to take this on properly. The United States has too much opposition and regulation of the nuclear industry, as does Europe. China could end up with a two-stage massive starship-like rocket that would send enormous payloads to the moon or Mars. They could use a faster decaying element with a much less massive design if the goal is landing and staying on the moon. A nuclear thermal sea dragon style rocket would be the ultimate mass lifter with today's technology. You could effectively land a small colony ship with mining equipment, 3D construction facilities, inflatable housing, science facilities, and tons of supplies in one launch. A nuclear thermal first stage that lands in the ocean for recovery and safety, and a nuclear thermal and electric second stage that powers the moon or Mars base until solar and other power systems get set up would rapidly establish the first space nation and allow China to leap ahead of everyone else. The question is not can they, but will they. Thank you for listening and stay safe.